Okay, so today when I opened up the back of my Jeep and uh, pulled out my, uh, my backpack, I had a little bit of an epiphany. Even after you've been hiking for years and years and years and using your gear, you still make really stupid mistakes. Um, so I thought today I would uh, give a little bit of 101 on bladder usage. Bladders for dummies so that you can avoid some of the redundant mistakes that most people make because they become a bit complacent. And uh, yeah, if you've never owned a bladder before, um, this is a great intro for you because uh, hopefully you'll learn all the stupid stuff that, that uh, you know, we've done along the way and uh, hope to avoid. Number one, buy a bladder. If you're still taking store-bought water bottles uh, out on the trail, like, come on, you're better than that. I typically travel with, uh, so this is my old, well-used Camelback hog bag. Um, I typically use a three liter bladder, no matter what. Um, I don't care if it's a really short hike. Uh, you know, this is a small bag. So any hike that I go on that I can only carry this much gear is probably a short, you know, two, four hour hike. But regardless, I'm always packing at least a three liter bladder and it's almost always full. So a little thing about uh, getting what you pay for. Um, a lot of bags that you'll buy, not necessarily this one, but a lot of bags that you'll buy will come with a very cheap bladder in it. Uh, you'll go look at the pack and you'll be like, oh wow, look, this is a great deal. This pack's got a bladder, it's got this side or the other, and you know, it's, a, it's an inexpensive pack. Let me get started here. Um, I've learned over the years, you get what you pay for. Um, typically, most bags that come with a bladder that are lower end bags, the bladder's crap. Uh, there's no spine on it, there's no, um, no support. This is an Osprey three, uh, three liter bladder. Um, this is one of my new favorite uh, pieces of gear. It actually has a rigid back on it, um, so it doesn't, it doesn't fold over when you set it on anything. When you set it in your sink to clean it, um, it doesn't fold over. It also has a spine on the front, um, so you can grab it, pick it up, swing it around. Um, I could see where that might be a, a bad thing. It takes up a little bit of extra space in your bag, but you know I don't really feel bad about losing this much, this much space. Um, for me, it's, it's just really easy to handle. All right, so let's talk about filling your bladder. <laughs> If you're going to be going hiking and you know that you're two hours from your destination, uh, you want your water to be cold. Load this whole thing up with ice cubes and then fill whatever space is left with water. By the time you get to your hike, it's still going to have ice in it and probably by the time you're two hours in, you'll just be using up the rest of that ice. And especially on an 85, 90 degree day, um, that's a lifesaver. On a hot day, if you bring out water without ice in it, within an hour of you hiking, your back will heat this up and you'll be drinking warm water. So I didn't mention we are camping yet. Uh, this is Curtis Creek Campground. Uh, it's in Pisgah Forest uh, near Linville, Mount Mitchell area. Uh, this is a US Forest uh, Service campground, I believe. I've never been here before, but I am super stoked. Uh, they have five or six campsites. I'm actually sitting up on a bluff here and uh, my, my Jeep is parked 30 or 40 feet up a little drive. Um, got steps up to this campsite and it's completely secluded. There's four or five sites like this. Um, they have an area with uh, more open um, RV sites and a big field with open campsites, but they have five or six sites like this. Uh, they also have a bunch of primitive sites that are free um, up the road. So first come first serve for these sites, first come first serve for the primitive sites, but um, this is a great little find. Most of the national forests and, and bigger areas across the U.S. have um, U.S. Forest Service campsites, and they're they're kind of a kind of a niche campsite because um, they're not privately owned. The, 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 the folks that run it are volunteers. Um, it's something. It's a campsite that you need to look for to find it and uh, know where to look. So I'll leave some links in the show notes um, so that you can find some of these places. But uh, yeah, I'm super stoked to be uh, setting up for the night, getting my fire going, and uh, chilling out on this awesome, awesome uh, campsite. All right, so we just talked about filling your bladder. <laughs> By the way, this is a non-alcoholic campground, in case you were wondering. Um, 
Number one, fill it all the way up. Uh, don't leave spare space. The more water you have in case you get hurt, need to stay overnight, um, obviously you need to be packing gear for whatever happens, but you're often also uh, hiking with friends. And you know, for me personally, I take it upon myself to make sure that I'm gonna be able to care for myself and for my friends if, if they run into any problems. Um, so yeah, make sure you fill your water bladder. You know, it's some extra weight, some extra workout, but uh, yeah, no, no worries there. So this is why I'm shooting this video today. Um, essentially, when I got here and started unloading my Jeep, uh, opened up the back and there was water everywhere. Mostly because of stupidity. But essentially, uh, you know, a good, a good uh, bladder has a really nice functioning seal if you know how to use the functioning seal. <laughs> this one actually lines up perfectly. You can see that Osprey is uh, either gonna be right, right side up or perfectly upside down depending on how you thread it. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually in there. So when I got here, uh, the bottom thread was a little bit off, just didn't seal it properly, and there was water all over the, the back of my Jeep with some of my gear uh, sitting in water. Rule number three, prevent seepage. <laughs> Oddly enough, whenever I, whenever I filled this up, I filled it upright, screwed it on, uh, made sure that this was closed, and put it in my bag, and then I set my bag in my Jeep. What I didn't do was go like this. Super easy. This guy's an idiot. Um, that's, that's all there is to it. Flip your bag over, squeeze it a little bit, make sure no water's leaking, and then drop it into your pack. I got no words for my stupidity, but hopefully you don't make that same mistake. All right, number four. Um, whenever you fill it up, uh, woo, get rid of that extra air that's inside of it. Uh, all that's doing is taking up extra space in your bag. So essentially, whenever you fill it up, uh, you're gonna have some air in the top of it. Seal it off, make sure, that, make sure you don't have any leaks. And then if you turn it upside down so that your tube is feeding from this end, you can essentially suck the rest of that air out. That was super sexy, right? But essentially, you can see I, I just took out a ton of space in that. And that space in your bag, um, especially when you're using something this small, um, those extra inches really allow you to pack a lot more into this instead of taking up the space here. The other thing is whenever you're drinking out of this, um, drink out of it, go ahead and push that water back into the bag. Uh, this water out here in the tube will get warm really quickly, so if you do have ice in your bag, you don't want any water here, put it back in your bag and uh, let that cool off with the rest of the water. All right, number five on bladder 101. Most bladders actually have an on-off valve. Honestly, it took me a couple years to figure this out. It's not that big of a deal whenever you're walking around, whenever you're hiking, whether that's on or off, you're not gonna have any leaks, but if you set this in your in your truck or in your Jeep, your car, and this happens to end up underneath something and it squeezes, you're gonna have a leak. Easiest way to, to stop that is turn it off. So this one, if, if the uh, valve is turned this way, it won't leak. Uh, turn this way and it will leak or it'll let water out. So uh, whatever bladder you're getting, take a look at um, what the on-off valve is, is like on that and make sure that you're using it, especially when you're traveling. Not necessarily when you're hiking, but when you're traveling and your bag's just sitting um, in, in your vehicle. All right, so a uh, little side note. One of the cool things that uh, I absolutely love, um, this, this particular Osprey uh, bladder, they, I know that other bladders have this as well, but um, this just happens to be the one that I use. But they have a magnet built into it. So this is an actual magnet right here. And when I bought this model, it actually came with a clip that goes on, uh, I actually have mine right here. So whenever it's strapped around me up front, this just snaps right down. Take a drink, snap it right down. Totally thought that was a gimmick whenever I got it. I mean, really, you're trying to sell me on the fact this thing has a magnet on it. Not gonna lie. I love that feature. Um, loved it so much that actually what I did was I went online, and, and I'll leave this link in the show links, went online and I bought three more of those little magnetic pieces so that whenever I use this bladder in my bigger bags or my other bags, um, I don't have to swap that back and forth. So I think it was like six bucks for three more of, of the uh, connections here, 
And now all of my bags have that, so that whenever I swap this bladder back and forth, um, you know, I never, I never uh, don't have a place for this just to snap up to. Number six, because I went through this last night, this is a biggie. Um, clean your bladder. <laughs> no, but seriously, clean your bladder. Uh, whenever you get home from a hike, first thing you do, take it to the sink, grab it out of your bag, take it to the sink, unscrew it, and just turn it upside down. What that's gonna do is make sure that, you know, if you're exhausted, go to bed and take a shower first, you scrubby. What that's gonna do is, um, by unscrewing it and throwing it in your sink is, you're gonna have to deal with it. Go get your shower, go to bed, you're exhausted, but tomorrow morning, whenever you wake up, this is gonna be sitting in your sink, and it's already gonna be drained of water. In theory, if all you had in here was water, all you gotta do now is rinse it out and, and let it dry. There's hanging racks, I'll leave some links in the, in the, in the show notes um, to some hanging racks that are super cheap. You know, you go throw it in your closet, hang it up, uh, the water evaporates, and it's clean. Even if you just leave water in here for two weeks, uh, three weeks, you're gonna go and be ready for a hike and realize that there is some nasty, 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 nasty water in here. It's not easy to clean. It's an annoying thing to have to do it, but uh, the more times you actually make the mistake of not doing it and go back a week or two later and um, think that you're gonna have a clean bladder to just grab and go, um, it's a real pain in the butt to clean. Again, with that with that hanging kit, there's some, uh, some really nice uh, brushes that will actually get inside this tube if you got some gunk in there. Especially if you're using electrolyte drinks and things like that, uh, like Noon tablets or um, Gatorade or any of those things, uh, those are going to get uh, nasty much quicker. So you leave that stuff in here for a week, you'll notice uh, little black things starting to grow in here. You got to get those clean very quickly. So make sure that you rinse your bag out um, if you're using any electrolyte tablets or Gatorade or Powerade or any of those things. Um, whenever you get home, unless you're literally going hiking the next day, you know you're going to be filling it up. Just dump it out. Um, it's easier in the long run. All right, so that's it. Hopefully, fairly quick uh, bladder basics. They're all really important, but you know, honestly, if you don't have a bladder, the most important uh, thing is to go get one. You know, you only you only need one good one if you're going to use it religiously and clean it and, and treat it right. Um, I have two or three just because uh, I rotate them and you know different size bags. But honestly, this one is my go-to. Uh, now just because I love it. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out. I am going to throw another shrimp on the barbie and uh, Chill out for the rest of the night. See you next time